Hello, my name is Andrea Bitts, and I'm the Executive Director at the Jamestown Gymnastics Club. Due to the current COVID-19 situation, the Jamestown Gymnastics Club has decided to do their annual meeting as an online video. This video will provide our families and the community information on our organization and our outlook for the future. Hi, my name is Danielle Hatch and I'm the president of the Jamestown Gymnastics Club Board of Directors and I'm going to report into you the results of last year's gun raffle. We had a total of 3,420 tickets sold for a net profit of $37,352. We gave out gun and gift card prizes in the amount of $30,048 and also cash prizes to the top ticket sellers of $1,000. The top ticket sellers this past year were Sydney Fisher, 166 tickets sold, Josie Davis, 102 tickets sold, and Kennedy Wagner, 96 tickets sold. As far as this year's gun raffle, we do intend on proceeding with a gun raffle. However, as of now, we are unsure of the date of ticket distribution and also the date of the drawing. We will keep you posted and let you know when tickets will be handed out. Without you guys, we can't do this successfully, so we do appreciate everything you do and the efforts that you put in to make this successful. Hi, my name is Wendy Hager. I am a board member and acting as the secretary currently for the executive board for the gymnastics club. Um, I have three children, my youngest two of which are in gymnastics, Sadie, who is level five, six in competitive, and then my other daughter, Charlie, is in training team. Um, I love working with the board for a number of reasons, but um, more than anything because I love to see gymnastics grow in Jamestown. It's a wonderful sport and helps to keep uh, our youth strong and well-rounded. Um, it's also great in terms of learning uh, how strong you actually are. Um, I've always marveled at how my daughter, who's three years younger than my son, can outdo him in terms of pull-ups and push-ups. So, um, go gymnasts. Hi, my name is Amy Nagel and I've been on the Jamestown Gymnastics Board for about three years. I have one daughter in gymnastics, Madeline. And she's in level four competitive. Hello, gymnastics parents and supporters. This is Mike Newmiller. Um, been on the board for about four or five years. Um, I've got three girls in the program, uh, two competitive girls and one in rec. I'm just going to talk a little bit about through the years I've been talking about the building. Um, in the last uh, year, uh, especially in the last six months, We've uh, seen a lot of progress. Unfortunately, the whole uh, COVID-19 thing has slowed us a little bit, um, but I'm here to give you an update on uh, how things have progressed and where we're currently at. Um, we, are, we did pick a couple contractors. We did look at a few contractors, um, but we did go with Hillerud um, as the general contractor. Um, Annie and Bree have especially been working with uh, Trent at Hillerud and working with Wright Architectures at this point. Um, Wright does have some connections back to Jamestown. Um, so they've been doing uh, quite a bit of work on that. Right now we had just got our latest um, floor plan. And as you can see here, the latest floor plan um, looks like this. So. It is uh, same entrance point, um, floor in the middle, um, bringing the bars into this area, the beams here, and then the rec floor here, um, leaving this area for the vault um, with some bleachers, some offices, and some different uh, uh, bathrooms and stuff in this area. So that's the basic general plan that we have right now. Um, uh, and maybe I should reverse for a minute and say that we are looking at a remodel um, versus a uh, new building. So this is a complete plan that we look to phase in, hopefully 
different objects of this plan that you see here in front of you. Um, as the uh, plan gets finalized, we've been looking at financing. We've started to look at financing. Um, the financing that we've looked through has been through Bank Forward and FCCU. At this point, we're waiting to get some of the final numbers from Trent to see what kind of phased approach we're going to do or whether we're going to be able to take the whole project on with the funds we have. Um, depending where we're at with those, then that's the financing that we'll have. Continuing with the gun raffle to help support it and um, move on, hopefully with after the COVID-19 thing is over, with increased numbers to to keep the funding available to support the building. Rough numbers have come in at um, 600000 three quarters of a million dollars to do the renovation. So, and that, like I said before, will be in a phase, phase type process. So that could be we do some of the addition, um, raise the roof, add some pits, and then the next year maybe do the addition. But... Um, we're kind of looking at it from a lot of different angles. Um, some of the project concerns that we've seen as of this point, up to this point, um, have been parking. Um, there's been some concerns that once we get a building permit that we're going to have to look at uh, where people can park. Um, there has been some initial talks with Dactel on using that lot to the south. Um, and then maybe changing some street parking along the east side of the building. So that's continuing to be looked at. Some other problems have been property lines. Um, it, right now, it looks like we can build up to the west property line, but going east is going to be a concern. Um, so we've kind of had to work around those and some of the plans. Uh, Kind of the last thing I want to cover, you know, is, was with the funding that I talked about a little bit before. Um, we are looking to maybe start a capital campaign and looking for somebody to head that up. So if anybody's interested in doing that, leading that, um, there is some names already put together. Annie and Bree have put names together. There's been some thought already put into it, but nobody really to lead the charge. So if anybody's interested, um, please let Annie, Bree, myself know, and we'll get you in touch and get you moving on something like that. So it'd be much appreciated. We don't have anybody to lead anything like that right now. Um, hope this brief description helped out a little bit on where we're at with the building. Um, just in summary, we're looking at a remodel of the current building. Uh, hopefully to be done in a year, year and a half, depending on how the COVID-19 goes and how the funding is able to be uh, found. And then, of course, the whole payoff situation. So if you've got any questions, please bring them to the meeting. I think it's June 8th. Um, thanks. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is John Solva. I'm a board member with the uh, James Home Gymnastics Club. I am the board member that tracks and uh, sells the advertising for the club. Uh, those advertising boards that you see uh, crossed from the uh, bleachers while you're waiting to pick up your children or attending gymnastics meets. Uh, we're also looking at adding uh, advertising onto the show team floors. Well, a couple of years ago, we purchased the uh, air floors, the new air floors. And uh, since that time, we, we, we intended to sell advertising on those floors. Uh, we are still moving forward with that. Uh, so as we find out more information on potential uh, opening uh, of uh, sports venues and how sports venues may look next fall when uh, show team comes back back around, uh, we're going to move, start moving forward with selling uh, that advertising on those uh, those air floors. Uh, obviously, advertising on those will will get a much greater audience by uh, being visible at uh, basketball, wrestling, uh, other sports venues around the the uh, local area, and potentially into Fargo and uh, Grand Forks, where show team has performed in the past. 
So as we move forward, uh, if you, you or somebody you know is interested in uh, purchasing, uh, whether it be a advertising board uh, on the wall of the club or uh, possibly on these uh, show, team, show team floors, uh, please get a hold of the club and uh, they will put you in touch with me and uh, we will see if we can get something worked out and get your advertising up in the uh, in support of, of your business and the Jamestown Gymnastics Club. That's all I have for today. Uh, thank you. Hi, I'm Brie Carlson. I am the competitive supervisor slash head coach at the gymnastics club. So that means I oversee pre-team, training team, level three through 10, and the Excel program. I've been with the club since 2013 and I'm one of the two full-time employees. And I'll be giving a little brief overview of our year. Uh, this year we added in some adult open gyms on Monday nights and we started up our homeschool program again. That had about 20 kids attending it regularly. We continued with our parents' night out, and we had five of those with 20 to 30 kids attending those. And we hosted 26 birthday parties this year. Um, you may not know this, but we are home to the Blue Jay gymnastics team. The gymnastics team this year got second at the state meet, which was super awesome, and they got the highest team score in Blue Jay gymnastics history. So that was super cool to be a part of. On the competitive side, we had 53 gymnasts in the competitive program this year. Uh, some of those girls got to go to meets. We, hope, we got to go to six meets before COVID cut our season short. Uh, we got to host one of those meets. It was our biggest meet to date. We had over 400 kids from three different states at our winter skate meet, and that was really awesome. Uh, since we've closed our doors, we um, put out some virtual content for kids. We had 20 competitive kids signing up for that, and they got some workouts and conditioning and some challenges to do at home. But recently, we have opened up with our phase one. Uh, we opened up to our upper, upper level kids. We have about 26 of them coming in classes of six to eight at a time, and we're doing all the CDC recommended procedures, such as taking temps and sanitizing and social distancing, but we can hopefully start phase two soon. So if you have any questions on the information I just gave or anything about the competitive program, please contact me. Hi everyone, my name is Martha and I'm the rec supervisor at the gymnastics club. So I oversee our preschool classes, hot shots classes, and the flips classes. Um, we had 200 kids, or almost 200 kids, enrolled in our rec classes this year, so that was great. Unfortunately, um, our season got cut short with COVID-19, but we started doing online classes for April, and we've continued those through May. We had about 30 kids enroll in online classes, and they've been getting videos for their stretching and warm-ups, event workouts, and conditioning workouts. And the spring show this year was canceled um, because we couldn't hold it in the gym. But we have now scheduled a virtual spring show. So some of our flips classes, um, the kids are doing their routines at home. And then they're sending in videos of their routines to us, and we're judging their routines. And then giving them their judging sheet with corrections and comments on their routine, as well as their spring show t-shirt and a medal. For the younger rec gymnasts who did not have a routine to perform, um, we are going to do a Zoom meeting so they can join a Zoom meeting from their living room and they can invite grandparents, aunts and uncles, cousins to join a Zoom meeting and then the kids can show off their skills um, through a Zoom meeting. And we are hoping to get some of our older FLIPS um, kids and some of the Hot Shots kids back in the gym for June. Um, that is phase two of our reopening, 
and then we're hoping to start phase three, which would be our preschool classes, parents' hot classes. Um, we're hoping to get that, those classes back in the gym in maybe July or August. So we're super excited about what the next year holds for our rec classes. Hey, this is Coach Nikki with the Star Show team. I just want to say thank you for another fantastic year. It has been extremely fun coaching all of the girls. Unfortunately, our season was cut short, but hopefully next year we can have another fantastic season. We were just getting all of our girls back to being healthy and having a great time. I would like to thank Coach Carla and Coach Rachel for another fantastic season and excellent instruction. And to all the Matt moms, thank you so much for being there each and every practice and show. Um, I think one of our favorite shows was the UND game, uh, especially when the basketball was thrown into the crowd, which consisted of our parents. That was pretty exciting. Uh, I'd like to also thank all the returning gymnasts for coming back and sharing the season with us. And for all you new gymnasts, I hope you had a great time and hope to see you back next year. And for Courtney, our senior, um, Hope to see you before you leave, and sorry we didn't give you a proper farewell, but hopefully, again, we'll get to see you and give lots of hugs. And Coach Rachel, I'm going to miss you, and uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do without you keeping me in line, but hopefully somebody can step up and take that uh, from you. And for all of the 10th and 11th graders this year that are coming up, you guys have shown incredible growth in leadership and in skills and personality. I can't wait to see what you guys do next year. So on behalf of myself and all of the STARS coaches, thank you everyone and all you parents for having the girls at the practices and shows. And hopefully next year we'll have a fantastic season. See you then. Bye-bye. In 1983, Jamestown Gymnastics Club became a volunteer board-led 501c3 gymnastics program offering recreational, and preschool classes, as well as the demonstration team. Today, JGC employs around 20 part-time coaches at various times throughout the season, with two full-time staff. This past season, we had over 260 gymnasts in our programs, and we are home to the North Dakota State Gymnastics runner-up, the Blue Jay High School. Go Blue Jays! The COVID-19 pandemic has brought many challenges and changes for us. We responded with options for online classes during phase one. June one began our phase two opening, offering in-house classes for gymnasts ages five and up. As restrictions continue to ease up, we are eager to move on to phase three by the time the school year begins. For the remainder of this season and on to next season, we are looking to move forward with our building remodel. The remodel was presented earlier by Mike Newmiller. As the sport of gymnastics continues to evolve, our facility has its shortcomings. Over 35 years ago, several families in our community came together to invest in our programs and we continue to benefit from their support. It is now time for this generation to pay it forward for the next generation. We aspire to provide our youngsters with expanded opportunities for strength development with climbing walls and ladders over foam pits. We seek to provide competitive and high school gymnasts training pits to safely learn and perform their skills. The ability to hold show team practices at our facility. We strive for better function and flow to the facility for all who enter. And we hope to partner with community organizations such as the Ann Carlson Center and Alpha Opportunities to provide children and adults of all abilities the opportunity to experience movement through gymnastics-like activity. JGC has spent the past few years fundraising and planning to embark on our dream of expanding our facility to include in-ground pits and trampolines, elevated ceiling height for bars, to allow for a dedicated preschool area, and enough space for show team practices. This expansion will provide additional members of our community the opportunity for movement through gymnastic-like activities. We have an aggressive goal of 750,000. We currently have 240,000 saved. I invite you to join us in providing increased opportunities 
for adults and children of all abilities in our community. If you are interested in helping support our mission of providing the best gymnastic instruction along with a positive and safe environment to enable gymnasts to reach their true potential, I can be reached at the club at 252-7446 or email jgc at Dactel or put you in touch with any of our board members. We hope you enjoy our annual meeting updates and are excited about the future of JGC. If you have questions, concerns, or any ideas to share, we invite you to our June 8th meeting at 7.30 p.m. on Zoom. There will be a link emailed out and posted on our Facebook page.